leave the floor to you. You can start. Uh, Grace, uh, thank you for the introduction, and uh, I will try to end on time. And uh, my name is Zhong Tan, and today I will present our research, new process for black box model optimization and our Bayesian framework. And this research is conducted by me, Lei Lin, Wen Cheng Wu, and Bei Li Xu. Uh, we're from the Rochester Data Science Consortium, University of Rochester. Okay. And here is the outline of our work. I will firstly talk about our motivation to show why the research is important and deserves investigation. Then I will briefly introduce uh, what is patient optimization and the research is based on patient optimization and neural network. After that, I will go through our method and discuss our experiments and the results and finally give some future research directions. So why parameter organization is important? As we know, uh, there are a lot of complicated physical systems, for example, the power grid system and the atom array. For this kind of system, the, the relationships between model parameters and the outputs are uh, unknown or sometimes uh, it's, it's hard to track. So they are also called black box systems. However, these systems may also face changes sometimes, such as if we add a new generator in the power grid system or if a fault happen on generator. These changes may affect the performance of the whole system, but uh, as we still require the system to run smoothly and stably, uh, the parameters should be adapted in order to deal with the problem. Traditionally, this process is highly rely on the domain experts, and they will try different parameter combinations according to their experience. And try until a satisfactory parameter combination is found. For example, the, for the power grid system, we need a domain expert and a phaser measurement unit to perform the test phase. And this testing phase can cost a lot of money and human effort. And in this way, uh, in order to solve the problem, automated parameter optimization methods are required. And our goal is to develop efficient, accurate, and online parameter updating method. Uh, here shows two conventional automated black box optimization algorithms uh, include grid search and random search. In grid search, uh, we will evaluate the model performance on all parameter combinations defined by the grids and select the parameter combinations that yields the best performance. And uh, for the random search, uh, it can potentially explore the parameter space more extensively. And uh, however, both these two methods only reduce the human effort and don't utilize the prior experiment information so that the search is blind. And uh, recently, more advanced automated optimization algorithms have been proposed. Uh, this is a Bayesian optimization. The algorithm con constructs the relationship between parameter combinations and the performance of the black box system so that it can provide guidance for the next selection of the parameter combination, which is more likely to be the optimal point for evaluation. Uh, in this way, it can make the method more efficient to find the global optimal. And in this equation, uh, x represents the current parameter and x hat is the optimal parameter I have found so far. And f is a function that used to evaluate the performance of the system. And this part is a framework of Bayesian optimization. Uh, for Bayesian optimization, there are two essential components, uh, a surrogate model and an acquisition function. The surrogate model is used to predict the model performance for specific input parameters. And the acquisition function is used to balance the trade-off process. And in this equation, uh, tau is the current best performance and mu x and sigma x are the main and the variant of the predicted performance. And this is uh, this one is a commutative distribution function. And this one is a probabilistic distribution function. 
And by maximizing the acquisition function, we can find the parameters that have the most expected improvement compared to the current optima. And will be uh, and uh, the suggestion will be used for the next test. Uh, and for Bayesian optimization, it will repeatedly execute these steps until satisfactory input parameter combination is found. Firstly, uh, we will randomly assemble some uh, point as, as our prayer, and to fit our this prayer to the surrogate model, which is usually the Gaussian process regression. And then we use the circuit model to predict the model performance on the whole, uh, to predict the system performance on the whole potential parameter space. And after that, by maximizing the acquisition function here, uh, which in our case, we use the expected improvement, we can then find where the next input parameter combination should be tested. And finally, we can obtain the observation on the suggested parameter combination here and add our result to the observation step. And this step is usually the most expensive step because we need to interact with the environment. And uh, usually the black box system is very expensive and time consuming. Uh, well, in this process, uh, we focus on the, in our research, we focus on the surrogate model and there are two drawbacks for the Gaussian process regression. Firstly, the time complexity of Gaussian process regression is cubic. And secondly, Gaussian process regression performs not good when the dimension of parameter space is high. Uh, in other words, when the system becomes more complicated, the Gaussian performs uh, bad. And before we start, uh, we need to say what does the circuit model require? And uh, the answer is uh, basically a circuit model need to make predictions of the system performance as well as the measurement of uncertainty at the same time. So a probabilistic model is needed. And as neural networks are very flexible and scalable, what about neural using neural networks as a surrogate model? The answer is yes, but without some operation, neural networks are deterministic model. So uh, the key point here is how to model the neural networks into a probabilistic way and adapting neural networks to the Bayesian optimization framework. Uh, here shows some previous researches. This one is called DNGO, Deep Neural Networks for Global Optimization. And in their work, they replace the surrogate model with a neural network, a very basic neural network. And uh, they conducted a two-stage training process. They first, they train a deterministic neural network with fully connected layers. And after that, they freeze the parameters of the neural network and replace the last layer by a linear, by a patient linear regression. So the neural network in this case is just like a feature extractor and a patient linear regression mainly used to obtain the uncertainty. And this one is called Bohanian, patient optimization with Hamiltonian Monte Carlo artificial neural networks. In their work, um, well, they have same neural network structures as DNGO. But what different is that they regard each parameters of the neural network as a distribution instead of a value. So it is a Bayesian neural network. And since every parameter of the neural network is a distribution, so in order to gain the uncertainty, they will just sample several neural networks and uh, give the predictions. And uh, as each sampled neural network were different from each other, so the predictions are also different, which actually uh, we can gain the, uh, obtain the uncertainty. And in our research, we implement a neural, neural process, which is a random process that try to use neural networks to mimic the Gaussian process and to represent the distribution of our functions replace the surrogate model. 
the neural process, uh, it will firstly divide, divide the data set into context point and target points here. Uh, this is context point and this is target point. Then it introduces the latent variable Z called by the context point here. And um, after that, uh, in the inference process, they take Z as the information to retrieve the Y target given X target point. The red group is an example of the predictions using neural process. For each point, X, uh, this red point, uh, there are random variables and they obey the distribution F. So uh, X1 with F1, X2 with F2, blah, blah, blah. So from X1 to Xn, and this F is a random process because uh, each X is a random variable. And so we introduce a latent vector Z, which could parameterize the random process F. And then the Fx change to Tx given Z. Uh, well, that is for example, when a Gaussian process is parameterized by its mean and uh, variance. So ideally, if F is a Gaussian process, then Z should be the mean and the variance. And uh, using the Bayesian rule, we can extract Z to the front. Um, here shows the overall network architecture in our implementation of the neural process. We made some adaptions based on the original paper, and we built our model that includes three components, a deterministic encoder, a probabilistic encoder, and a decoder. And it can be seen the probabilistic encoder is used to generate the Z that can be used to define the random process F. We assume Z obeys the multivariant normal distribution here, and this distribution is generated, is generated from the neural network by output mu and sigma. The deterministic encoder here with the, output, with the outcome R is used to help improve the model stability. And the main function is applied after both the probabilistic encoder and the deterministic encoder by adding the vectors together and takes the average. Uh, this step is, be usually be uh, is because the information is usually additive. And finally, the decoder takes X, R, and Z and generates the predictions. Uh, I have to mention that the these predictions are are also distributions with a mean and a variance. Or in other words, we can regard Y is also random variable. And uh, instead of separate the entire data set, we use a subset in each batch uh, as, a, uh, as a context point and the, and the others as a target point. The loss function we use is called evidence lower bound and uh, after some mathematics, uh, this is a formula we are trying to maximize. It. The first term is that given Z, the probability that our prediction is correct. Uh, so th this is a likelihood. And the second part is a K-out divergence between the context point and the target point. And as we are trying to maximizing the likelihood and minimizing the chaos divergence between the, the target point and context point. So uh, we take the inverse of it uh, because we're, we're trying to minimize uh, minimize the chaos divergence between target and, and the context here. So this change to a maximizing problem, maximizing this part and uh, Overall, we are uh, we use the uh, minus negative, uh, which is a negative of this part as our loss function. Uh, we now show our experiments and results. And to generate our data set, we use the simulation tool to simulate an IEEE 14 bus system with which contains 14 parameters. Uh, you can see the meaning of each parameters in this table, and. Uh, there will 
be a fault occur on one of the generators of the system, which is a circle or here, one of them. And the fault will occur after the simulation runs three seconds, which makes the system output change. And our goal is to find the new parameter combination that can make the system work smoothly as before the fault happens. So we need to minimize the D here, which is the L2 distance between current output and previous output. As we defined our NPBO as a maximizing problem, so actually we are maximizing the inverse of D. Uh, what I need to mention is that before the optimizing phase, we conduct the parameter sensitivity analysis and remove those unimportant parameters. And finally, we have four parameters to be toned here. And uh, we monitor for output, which is which are real power injection, reactive power injection, bus voltage magnitude, and bus voltage frequency. Oh, uh, this is our result. And uh, we use the mean square arrow to measure our performance. Uh, the mean square arrow is defined uh, by the output different L2 distance between the stereotypical parameter combination and the parameters we optimized. As you can see here, our NPBO performs fast among all the methods. And the red graph shows the corresponding output. And as you can see here, there's only a very small gap between the target output and, uh, and our result. The purple line is the target output, and the red line is our result. And this indicates that our method makes the system perform stably as previous. And we also test our method on seven synthetic benchmark functions for patient optimization. Uh, and here we uh, we need to change the maximizing to minimizing problem, which we just uh, so we just use a negative value of the this function's output, and the value. Uh, in this table are the output of the function, and the lower, the better. And overall, among seven benchmark problems, NPBO performs uh, competitively on four of them. And take Brandon as an example. Uh, the left graph visualizes the Brandon function, and we use immediate regret to monitor the performance uh, to the number of iterations. The immediate regret is the absolute value between the current optimal and the stereotypical optimal. And as you can see here, MPB or, or is this line performs very well and competitively to Bohemian. Uh, this is for Gaussian based um, Gaussian process based patient optimization and the DNGO. And uh, let's summarize now. Um, the advantage of our work is that uh, compared with Gaussian process regression, the time complexity of neural process is linear and as it is uh, scalable to, uh, it also scalable to complicated systems, which comes, uh, this is comes from the neural network. And in the future work, we consider two aspects. The first one is we want to explore in the field of reinforcement learning to the parameter optimization problem. And uh, the second is we want to dip in to uh, find which circuit model fits what kind of problems that we talked about before. And uh, thank you for your attention.